Hi, my name is Dania Ramirez and I am from the Literacy Center of West Michigan. So today I want to describe uh, our Tutor Library database. Our Tutor Library database is um, a resource that we have created for you so you know what books we have in our Tutor Library and so that you can request them uh, to your literacy coordinator. So um, how do you get there? Well, the easiest way to get there is to go to the um, web page of the Literacy Center and to uh, scroll um, here and, and to just go to volunteer. Once you go to volunteer, you scroll all the way down and to get uh, to get to the educational resources part of the web page. And here, as you see here, uh, the second option on the right, on the left, sorry, is our Tutor Library database link. Uh, so as it says here, explore the list of materials in our Tutor Library, find out which textbooks and books are appropriate for your learner, and what support materials we have available for your own learning. Check the last edition of the tutoring manual for a tutorial. If you have any doubts, please contact your literacy coordinator. So as it says there, all this explanation is in your tutoring manual, but um, some people are more visual than others, and I thought that maybe uh, a video would be helpful. So um, you are going to click here into the library database, and that's going to take you to this, to our Airtable to the library database. So for those of you who are familiar with Excel, this is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, and for those who are not familiar with Excel, well, that doesn't matter because that's why I'm here trying to ex uh, and explain this um, to you. So as you see here, uh, we have six tabs. The second five, the last five, are um, the ones that include all the titles and all the information. The first one is just a cheat sheet. Uh, because we use a variety of symbols throughout the database, I thought it maybe it would be useful to have these uh, symbols explained here at the beginning. So as you see here, we have um, symbols that relate to skill, symbols that relate to level, and symbols that relate to learner. Um, so, for example, in the skill letter symbols, we have G for grammar, R for reading, V for vocabulary, and so on. And then we have A, B1, B2, C, and C+, um, which um, are the levels um, that we work with in the program. And depending on uh, your testing core of your learner, um, he or she is going to be placed within, you know, one of these levels. Uh, if you don't know the level of your learner, please ask your literacy coordinator. Finally, um, we have the learner, uh, which means uh, whether or not um, your learner is a native speaker of English or a non-native speaker of English. Books, books are created different um, for each of those populations. Um, now, I want to explain something here right away. So as you see here, we have B1 and B2. Um, and uh, many of the textbooks that we have here um, have only B. They don't have B1 or B2. This is because the resource that we use to grade our textbooks is a national resource that uh, is used by a lot of educational organizations and a lot of literacy councils and literacy centers, and they don't make the distinction between B1 and B2. However, um, for supplementary reading and audiobooks, we thought that the range was too broad, so we divided it between B1 and B2. In any case, this is just a guideline. Now, let's start looking at the database. So we'll go here first to textbooks. Um, we have here more than, a, more than 200 um, titles, as you can see. Just keep going down. Um, and uh, for each one of the titles, we have the textbook or the series title. Then we have a specific book title. Um, some textbooks come with a second title or some textbook series come with different titles depending on the book. I'll explain a little bit more about that uh, in a bit. We have the skills that each of these textbooks 
trains or practices. Uh, we have the level of the book. We have the type of learner that this book is directed um, at. We also have like a general content of the book, whether or not if it's for vocabulary, for um, grammar practice, for life and work skills, a variety of, of different contents. Um, we have the type of material. Here, as you see, there are textbooks and textbook series. And the main difference is that a textbook is a book in its kind of in its own right. But then a textbook series like this one, Career Paths, um, is uh, one collection of books that have different second titles or specific book titles, like you can see here. So these are all career paths, but all the titles here are for a different career. So that is a textbook series. Um, then we have uh, whether or not there is any workbook available, um, which are very useful for homework. Then we have if uh, the textbook includes a teacher's manual, uh, which is very useful also for teachers and for tutors. And then if it has any kind of support material like um, an audio CD or a resource CD or a DVD, etc. Finally, we have the publishing company. Now, um, it is very daunting to think about going through uh, a list of 200 titles. So there are two features in the database that are going to help you find exactly what you um, are going to be using with your learner, what is going to be convenient for you. So um, first we have filter and then we have sort. Now, if I have to choose one, I would go with filter for sure. So if you just want to make it simple, go with filter. So uh, with filter, we're going to just go here, um, click the, the, um, the filter um, option, and then we're going to go ahead and add a filter. So uh, imagine that I want a textbook that practices writing skills for a native speaker of English who is at the B level. Okay, so writing, B-level, native speaker of English. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to choose um, the level of my learner or the skill, whatever. It doesn't matter the order. So let's start with um, what would be more logical with learner. Okay, so I'm going to choose then ABE, which is native speaker of English. So I choose that and this cuts down the list considerably all the way down to 92 records. Um, then I'm going to add another filter about level. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to choose B, as we had said before. And this brings it down to 37 records or titles. And finally, I'm going to say, OK, I want to practice writing. So I'm going to go ahead and click here in writing. And that is going to bring it down to 24 records, which is way more manageable, right? And so um, then with these three filters, I can just go down, you know, the titles and choose whatever looks more attractive. If I have any kind of doubt with regard to what these books, you know, look like or when they were created, I can just go ahead and Google them, maybe with the title and the, and the publishing company, and then I can take a look at them and see the year they were created. Uh, some of them have newer editions, but um, the uh, idea is that, um, you know, you can explore yourself uh, with the database and then use internet and then make a decision about uh, what you would like your literacy coordinator to send you to practice with your learner. Okay, so now let's go to supplementary reading. You can leave the filters here. and um, doesn't really matter because it will reset uh, the database once you close all the pages. So let's go to supplementary reading. Um, so here we have even more. We have around 553, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I, I was right. 553 uh, different titles for supplementary reading, which um, includes mainly graded books. Um, now, these books are for adults, maybe some are for young adults, but mostly adults um, who have low levels of literacy. So these are great for our learners. Um, 
So as you see here, we have a title, we have author, we have genre, um, which is a classification that we uh, came up with. We have the level that this um, book would be good for. We have the publishing company. We are working on content description. As I said before, it's more than 500 um, different titles. So this is a long-term project that we're working on. And then we have barcode. Um, now, as many of you know, if you go to the library to check books out or check them in, right, to drop them off, um, now you have to fill out a form. And this form has a space for barcode. Um, so for example, if you decide to take two copies of How to Build Community, each one of these copies is going to have a different barcode. And so we ask you to enter both. Now, why is this? Even though we don't really care about textbooks coming back, uh, to be honest, because learners write on them, so we, we, we can use them again. Um, we do care about uh, supplementary reading coming back, mainly because these uh, books are a little bit more expensive and we want to take care of our resources so all our learners can benefit from the library. Um, and so this is kind of a good way of um, knowing which, um, which tutor took what book so we can kind of send you a reminder afterwards. Um, after that, then, uh, we have audiobooks. Uh, which is, you know, a different, uh, sorry, a similar thing. Um, the main difference is that we have fewer of them and that all of them come with either with a CD or with an audio component that you can download from internet directly into your phone. And now each one of these CDs also has um, a barcode. So make sure that you write also the barcode of your CD when you check out or check in books. It won't take you a, a lot of time. Um, so with supplementary reading and audiobooks, you can also filter and sort. Now, um, let's go to support material. So support materials are all those materials that are not textbooks or supplementary reading or audiobooks, but that somehow can help you in your lesson. So we have books about idioms that um, these books are not really graded, so we cannot really put them in textbooks, but um, are also very useful, particularly for um, C or C plus level learners. Um, we have flashcards, we have other CDs, we have DVDs, we have picture books, picture dictionaries, etc. Now we um, also here talk about their main content um, and any other materials that they have um, coming with them. Also, we have a publishing, the publishing company, and or the you know the the creator, the business that created these materials and the skills that they train the level and the type of learner. Now, as you see, you know, most of the materials have all the skills and all the levels and all the learners. And this is because uh, these materials are very broad in their applications. Um, it's a picture dictionary, so you can use it at any level to talk about anything, exactly. Um, so um, uh, that's why you, know, you will see all the symbols in most of them. Uh, finally, we have reference materials. So these books are not really for your learners. These books are for you. Um, now, we have one copy of each, so we ask you to keep them at the library and to um, kind of read them there, or you can make also copies for free at the Literacy Center. Um, these books um, um, address a variety of topics from um, different you know, activities that you can do in your class to dyslexia, um, into writing, uh, etc. We have the book um, or the audio CD. Sometimes it's not a book, but it's a, you know it's a DVD. We have the name of the author, the publishing company, the main content, what what it talks about. You know whether strategies, activities, life skills, English grammar, and a, and a variety of other topics. And then we have the content description. Now these are fewer books, so we did. Um, create uh, a content description for each one of them. Uh, we have around 68, almost 70 uh, different uh, resources. Um, but here you can also filter and sort. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, this has been um, 
a long-term project that we have been working on for a couple of years already. Um, and on, honestly, in my opinion, it looks beautiful and it's pretty easy to use. Um, but however, if you have, however, if you have any kind of question and you don't really know how to um, go about it, please ask your literacy coordinator. They're more than happy to help you. Um, the idea of this database is that from your home, you can look at what we have and you can request any materials to your uh, literacy coordinator. Now, if you come to the library, you will also see that we have a computer now at the library that has access to the database. So you uh, also don't need to go through all the books one by one and see maybe which ones you can use. Um, you uh, can just go into the database and see whatever it is that you want to use and decide that and then um, kind of just find your way in a, in a much smaller section of the whole library to find what you're looking for. Um, I encourage you to use the system. It's, um, it's supposed to make your job easier. Um, and uh, I encourage you also to come to the tutor library. Um, it's a very nice space. You can um, look for books there. You can uh, tutor there. You can um, just hang out there, prepare your lessons, and your coordinators are going to be next door ready for answering, um, ready to answer any kind of uh, question that you may have. Um, and so that's it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you around.